Um, we are so excited to welcome you to this event, to, to launch, to introduce, and to celebrate the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, which is an open access digital database of artwork inspired by the Book of Mormon. This catalog is funded by the Laura F. Willis Center for Book of Mormon Studies at the Neely Maxwell Institute here at BYU, and it is directed by Jennifer Champeau, who's going to be speaking to us this afternoon. Um, before we begin, I would like to let you know that this will be video recorded and then made available later on the Maxwell Institute YouTube channel, so you can recatch some highlights there. We'll begin with an opening prayer, um, then I'll introduce Jennifer. There will be both a Q&A and a reception afterward with refreshments, so stick around for all of those things. Jennifer Champeau is a scholar of Latter-day Saint visual art and the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog. She's taught art history as adjunct faculty at Northeastern University, Emerson College, Emmanuel College, and Colorado Community colleges online. She holds an MA in art history from Boston University and a BA in international politics from right here at BYU. Her scholarship on religious art has been published in several journals, including BYU Studies. She is a former vice president of the organization Mormon Scholars in the Humanities, a founding board member of Colorado Faith Forums, and is currently writing a book on the pioneer artist CCA Christensen for the Introduction to Mormon Thought series published by the University of Illinois Press. She lives in Colorado with her husband, who is in the audience, and her three children, who are not in the audience. So please join me in welcoming Jennifer. All right. Again, thank you all for being here today. It's so fun to see a lot of um, a lot of old friends and meet some new friends tonight. Um, and I have some of my family here, which is really great. Um, I'm so honored to be speaking at BYU, a place that helped kindle my own love for art and for um, for the gospel during my undergraduate years here, and an institution um, which has helped make this. Uh, project this dream become a reality um, through support from the Laura F. Willis Center um, at the uh, Center for Book of Mormon Studies at the Maxwell Institute here at BYU. There are three parts to my presentation today. Uh, first, since this is supposed to be an introduction to the Book of Mormon art catalog, I want to do just that, and I'll walk you through in some detail how the catalog is organized and how it can be used. And then second, I want to give you a glimpse of the catalog's scholarship possibilities by going through a handful of observations based on data that we've collected for the catalog. And I'm not going to address any one um, data observation um, in detail or make any big arguments, but my hope is just to show how the data from the catalog can be used by scholars and artists. And then third, I'll offer a few conclusions and also mention some well-deserved thank yous um, to people and institutions whose help was vital in making this project come to fruition. Before I jump in, though, um, to walking you through the catalog, um, I just um, wanted to give you a, f a few examples of the kinds of people I had in mind when I first started thinking about this project. Um, and I'll start with me. Uh, as a scholar of Latter-day Saint art, I found it was difficult to identify and um, uh, research existing Book of Mormon art in a, a thorough or systematic way because there was no complete list of the art. As I was writing a history of how Lehi's dream has been depicted in the art, I found it difficult to get a comprehensive picture of what had been done because so much of the art was in different sources that I had to search for and then wade through. And even then, some of the art was unknown or just inaccessible. I wanted to understand patterns in Lehi's um, dream art and to consider why those patterns had developed. And I realized that one scholar simply couldn't find all the art um, and that a collaborative repository for Book of Mormon art would be useful. But in thinking about the challenges I faced with the scholarship, I also started thinking about those who want to use art to teach, for example, in Sunday school or seminary um, or anything else involved with the Book of Mormon. Such teachers tend to resort to the sources that are most known and accessible, which makes sense, but I wondered how does that affect how we collectively come to think about and visualize stories from the Book of Mormon. As I and others have written about, the art we see most has a huge impact on how we think about and relate to our scriptures and our religious beliefs. So I wondered what would it look like if teachers could easily find imagery of all kinds to visualize the Book of Mormon? And that also got me thinking about the artists. 
I'm not much of an artist, but I study artists, and it's easy to see how art can be influenced in a variety of ways by the imagery that's accessible and known to the artist. If we have a relatively closed universe of art, it stands to reason that artists are highly likely to be influenced in common ways based on that closed universe. But what would it look like if we opened up that universe and made accessible art across time and geography? Could that lead to a greater variety of new art? Could that lead artists to note where certain topics or certain interpretations have not been depicted visually and to fill the gap? These were the kinds of questions and people I had in mind when I started thinking about this project. And that brings us to where we are today with the launch of the Book of Mormon Art Project. The Book of Mormon Art Catalog addresses the needs of scholars, artists, and church members by providing unprecedented access to visual imagery inspired by the Book of Mormon. The catalog is a comprehensive, open access, and searchable digital, digital database of more than 2,000 images. It brings together for the first time Book of Mormon art from a range of public and private institutions, um, uh, I'm sorry, public and private collections, <laughs> museums, galleries, studios, exhibitions, and publications. In this role, the Book of Mormon art catalog supports research and education, promotes a greater knowledge of artists worldwide, highlights the diversity of LDS art and artists, and provides a study and devotional resource for members of the church and other interested individuals. And this picture that you see here is by CCA Christensen, um, who Kim noted I'm, I'm writing a book on. And this is Moroni hiding the plates from a, a panorama that he did in the early 1870s. And um, as far as we've been able to tell, um, if this date given by the Church History Museum curators is correct, then um, these are the very earliest Book of Mormon images, this series, and this is one of them. And you see Moroni um, uh, handing the plates to, to Mormon, hiding it in a cave as, as the battle draws closer there. More than just a list of artworks, though, the Book of Mormon art catalog also includes extensive research. Each artwork entry has the most important data right next to the image. So you can see that here on this Walter Rain. Um, so we have the, his name and the title, um, the scripture reference that this piece refers to, uh, the medium, so it's, this is oil on board, uh, the date, it's 2003, and then a credit line. Um, uh, and then also if we know it, we'll include dimensions. Um, Several tabs below that organize additional data. So those are down here. Um, and uh, in each of the categories, we created a structured vocabulary for indexing to facilitate, um, facilitate search retrieval. So first on the references tab that you see um, highlighted here, this has direct links to places where the image has been used in church media, such as manuals, magazines, and online media galleries and where the image has been referenced in published sources like books or articles, blogs, and galleries. Um, if you click on uh, any, of, any of these links that you see here, they'll open in a new tab, and in most cases, they'll take you directly to where the image appears in those sources so you could find more information. Uh, many of the entries include links to sites where you can purchase an original or copy of the artwork. Um, and then second in the artist tab, this one right here. Um, this is where you can find information about the artist, such as their name, gender, country of origin, and residence, their website, and social media. Um, so you can see that here in this example of an artwork from a Book of Mormon series done by J. Kirk Richards. Uh, if a scholar wanted to use an image from the catalog in one of their publications, they could consult the credit line above or the artist tab to learn more and contact the copyright owner for permission if permission is needed for the contemplated use. Um, and you'll see that up here is the credit line. And then third, in the insights tab, you can find the names of the figures in the image, a list of symbols and animals, and a classification of the piece's technique and style. Um, this information was created by me and my team of research assistants as we went through each image and identified these elements, um, which was no easy task. 
It is especially helpful having this though in the advanced search, which I'll explain in a moment, because it allows you to look up all the images containing a particular figure, like if you just wanted to see all images of Nephi, um, or to see which symbols have been used in Book of Mormon art. Um, I tried to pick out some images that I thought might not be as familiar to the audience today. So this is um, a newer one by Michael Hall of Enos here, um, wrestling with his sins, which are um, symbolized by a cougar here. Um, and then we've even included data for which animals appear in the images. And you may not have known before that two Book of Mormon images include jellyfish. Um, there's a jellyfish here and up here, both of them um, on the Jaredite crossing the ocean. Um, also, two of them include dragons, and I'll let you explore the catalog to find those. <laughs> and then finally, our additional info tab down here. Um, this will tell you the physical location of the artwork, um, the exhibition history, including museums and galleries, the church's international art competition and online exhibitions. It'll also tell you um, if the piece has won any awards, whether it was commissioned or was part of a series, uh, provenance, and any other extra notes. Um, and as in the references section, where possible, these listings include hyperlinks. Um, so like for exhibition history, that the link will take you directly to where the image is included in that online gallery. Um, so with all of this data now attached to each artwork, users can browse the site um, by some broad categories that we've listed here on our homepage. So we have artist, date, scripture reference, uh, place, which is nationality of the artist, topic, or style and technique. Um, and let me just explain quickly how this works. So we'll start with the um, browse by artist one. Did you notice I picked all Liahona images here? Isn't that kind of fun? Yeah. <laughs> but they're also different. Um, okay, so if you click on Browse by Artist, it'll bring up um, uh, an alphabetical list of all the artists. Um, any guesses on how many unique artists we have? If we, anyone want to venture a guess? 300? 600. 600 unique artists. Um, and then if you click on an artist's name, it'll bring up all of their artworks. Um, so here's a few of Walter Rain's paintings. Um, and from there, you can click on each one of these paintings to learn more and see all the information I was just telling you about. Um, our Browse by Date category works the same way. Um, and so you can see all the dates. Uh, if you wanted to look up uh, you know, what happened in uh, 1970, you can click on that and see what happened there. Um, uh, you can see we have the earliest Book of Mormon art here listed as 1871, which is that Christensen panorama that I talked about earlier. Um, uh, and then the next, just in case you're curious, the next two earliest after that would be George Ottinger's Baptism of Limhi in 1872, and then David Hiram Smith's Lehi's Dream, which was 1874 or 5. Okay, and then in our scripture reference category, um, this is how we've listed each artwork in terms of which chapter of the Book of Mormon the piece most closely relates to. Sometimes this was a fairly straightforward process. So Lehi's dream artworks, those all just went into 1 Nephi 8. But others were harder to pin down to a specific chapter or to limit to only one chapter. Um, in those cases, we tended to default to the earliest reference or the, the earliest of the chapters that corresponded um, then you can also browse by the artist's country of origin or residence. Um, uh, in the case of artists like um, CCA Christensen, who was from Denmark, um, but then immigrated as an adult to the United States, we've included artists like him in both categories. So you find him under Denmark and US. Um, okay, and then topics is another way to browse the catalog. So we, we curated this list of 100 topics um, that grew organically out of the artwork that we found. Uh, we wanted the topics to be specific enough that it'd be easy for users to find what they're looking for, but also broad enough to capture all of the artwork within just 100 categories. Um, this was not an easy process um, and took some refining, and we may continue to refine this as the project develops and more art comes in. 
Um, sometimes the topics refer to specific moments, um, such as, uh, let's see here, like Alma's conversion. Um, so Alma, son of Alma, conversion. Uh, sometimes uh, we've listed a, a specific name, like Sariah, or sometimes a more general category, such as Nephi preaches or warfare, when it was less clear which specific moment was depicted. Uh, and then finally, we've categorized the artwork by style and technique. For style, we labeled the art as either figurative, abstract, non-representational, folk, or installation. And on our website, we have definitions of each of those if you're interested in understanding our definitions there. Um, and then all of the artwork we categorized by technique as either carving, ceramic, digital illustration, drawing, engraving, etching, film, mixed media, mosaic, painting, photography, pottery, print, sculpture, stained glass, and textile. Um, and uh, if you have really good eyesight, you can also see down here <laughs> at the bottom of our homepage, we have a, um, or at the bottom of every page, I think, uh, we have a, a copyright notice on our website. And I think it may be worth just saying a word about that. Um, the images here are intended for non-commercial, private, educational use. Um, and it's the user's obligation to consider and comply with copyright restrictions. In an artworks entry, like the ones we were looking at earlier, if on the credit line, if we've put um, used with permission as part of the credit line, then that means that we've received licensing permission from the copyright holder to use that image on our website, but it's an exclusive license just for this project. So um, we've tried to include as much information as possible about the artist or copyright or location and links to those things um, to help users know where to go if they wanted to get image permissions for their own projects or if they wanted to find a commercial site that sells prints of the artwork. Um, all of the artworks are on our site are, are low resolution and are meant to really help you find the artwork um, and, then, and then you can go from there. Okay, so the second way to navigate the catalog is to conduct a specific advanced search of the database. Um, and each of these has a drop down menu. Um, and this is just a screenshot, so I can't show you, but um, you can see here's Lehigh's Dream is one of our topics. So um, if, if you're on the website and you click on it, it'll bring up a drop down of all of our topics. And it tells you how many are in each category. So you can see Lehigh's Dream has 224 images. Um, this powerful research tool makes possible a more thorough analysis of Book of Mormon art that's ever, than has ever been available before. For instance, um, a scholar can compare how female and male artists have portrayed Nephi, right? So you could, you could um, go to figures and select Nephi, and then you could go to artist gender and look at all the male ones and then look at all the female artist depictions of Nephi. Um, or you can review scenes of King Benjamin that are included in official church media versus those that are not. Or a Sunday school teacher could find art about the Savior's visit to America that's done by a South American artist if they wanted. Um, if you wanna see paintings from Argentina that include camels, we have filters that'll let you see just that. Um, spoiler alert, it's four paintings by Jorge Coco. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you wanna know how many Book of Mormon images have been produced every year since the book's publication, our timeline tool here will show you. Uh, if you're interested in which Book of Mormon scenes have been portrayed the most frequently, the topics filter can tell you that. Um, so really the possibilities are quite expansive with this multivariable search tool. And to give you a sense of the types of analysis available through this catalog, I just wanna highlight three broad ten trends which have begun to emerge from the data. Um, first, production of Book of Mormon art has increased substantially over time, though not as a steady growth, but rather in fits and starts. Second, the bulk of Book of Mormon imagery concentrates on just a handful of topics and figures. And third, Book of Mormon artwork is predominantly created by male artists, both in general and in particular for certain topics. So first, let's look at production trends. Um, so this is a timeline, um, starting here with our earliest known Book of Mormon piece in 1871. Um, 
And so after a flurry of initial artistic activity in the late 1880s, you can see this little flip here, <laughs> um, resulting in 70 images from 1871 to 1903, after that, there were only 22 known Book of Mormon images in the first half of the 20th century. So that's all along here. Um, then who, who knows what this is right here? Yeah, Arnold Freeberg and Minerva Tykert, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's 1948 to like 1954. Um, uh, and... Um, Sorry, lost my spot here. Um, they, they are, though, um, the only two artists working um, in earnest on Book of Mormon art at this time. The only other two artists in that little um, blip there are um, a painting uh, an image of Lehi's Dream by Avon Smith Oakson, and then one of Christ with the Nephites by Mabel Pearl Fraser. Um, Okay, and then here, I've done this just by decade instead of year, so you could kind of see the trends by decade too. The 1970s um, saw a slight increase as the church was, was commissioning um, Book of Mormon art for its correlated materials and manuals. Um, let's see, where is that? Right here. And then in the 1980s, uh, production basically doubled. Um, and then in the 1990s, almost doubled again, largely due um, to the interest of church history museum curators like Richard Oman in commissioning art on Lehi's dream and soliciting art from a broader international pool of artists. After 2010 here, you can see there was an explosion um, of Book of Mormon art, and the upwards trend appears to continue today. Um, so here's just the first three years of this decade. Um, with 228 artworks made in these three years, which is a greater volume of art than was that we know was, that we know of that was produced in the first 120 years combined after the publication of the Book of Mormon. Um, we've located artwork from 46 different countries, um, but 85 percent of Book of Mormon art has been created by artists from the United States. Uh, this chart shows the 10 countries with the highest contributions of artworks. Um, and then and you'll, the orange one is Argentina, which is almost all, or I think maybe all Jorge Coco. <laughs> and then this blue slab at the top uh, represents the other 36 countries. Um, with the exception of 19th century pieces made by pioneer immigrants from England and Denmark that show up in those first slices there. Um, we really don't see Book of Mormon art from outside the U.S. until 1979, with two pieces from northern European countries. And it's not until the later 1980s and 1990s that there began to be Book of Mormon art from Asian, Latin American, Middle Eastern, and African countries. I think this data confirms that um, things like the church's international art competition and Book of Mormon Central's uh, annual art contest um, as well as recent initiatives at the Center for Latter-day Saint, um, Saint Arts, have done much to increase the production and visibility of artwork and artists outside the United States. Um, but the data, data also demonstrates that um, there's still clearly work to be done and, and room for growth for art originally, originating internationally. Okay, next let's consider the trends and topics. Although we've cataloged 100 distinct topics, the 16 most popular topics account for more than half of all Book of Mormon imagery. As this chart illustrates, Lehi's dream is far and away the most frequently depicted topic or scene from the Book of Mormon. With 226 images, Lehi's dream is depicted twice as much as the next most popular topic, which is Christ in ancient America. More research and analysis is needed to understand why these are the most frequently depicted scenes. Could it be that they are the scenes that best lend themselves to narrative art? Maybe. Some, but not all of them, were among the earliest to be illustrated. Maybe there's an influence there. Some, um, such as Lehi's dream, or the ones of Nephi, Nephi preaching, or Nephi's ship, or Nephi with his brothers, and the Liahona, those are things that appear earliest in the Book of Mormon, so maybe that has an effect. It'd be interesting also to examine which of these topics have been discussed the most by church leaders and if that has an effect. I think it's worth noting that 
almost all of these most popular scenes are focused on male figures. Many depictions of women from the Book of Mormon don't appear until just recently. Um, the first image of Abish, for example, uh, appeared in the year 2000. Um, and the wife of King Lamoni, uh, Arnold Friedberg did a, a, a pretty an un, <laughs> not well-known sketch of her in 1950, but other than that, she wasn't visualized until 2003. So it's really just been in recent years that we start to see more emphasis on women in the art. Uh, similarly, certain individuals from the Book of Mormon get more attention in the art than others. Um, you'll see it at the bottom here. The most frequently depicted figure is Nephi, who shows up in 232 different artworks. Right behind him is Christ, who is depicted 223 times. And then Lehi, who comes in at 186. Laman and Lemuel are depicted about half as frequently as Nephi. Uh, but still more than the next most popular figures, which are Moroni, the son of Mormon, and Moroni, the captain, uh, Alma, the son of Alma, Mormon, Ammon, Abinadi, and then the stripling warriors. Um, on the other hand, there are some topics and figures that have been depicted very few times, including Morianton's maidservant, Hagoth, Corianton, the daughters of Ishmael, Gideonhai, Mosiah, and Helaman, I was kind of surprised about Helaman, um, but it's interesting. There are many depictions of his stripling warriors, um, but only a handful of Helaman with them and none of Helaman by himself. Um, and certainly there are others that don't show up in the art at all. So having this data will help artists and scholars consider why certain topics have received attention and others have not. And hopefully it will even lead to the development of art giving attention to less common topics and figures. Okay, finally, um, the catalog reveals some striking differences between the artistic contributions of males versus females. Um, as you can see in this pie chart, less than 30% of all Book of Mormon artworks are by female artists. Um, additionally, um, and this, this chart shows you by year. So male artists are the blue line and female is the orange line by year. Um, with the exception of uh, three years, every other year, more artworks were produced by male artists than female artists. Um, and I think two of these outliers for the females are, um, are explained by special circumstances. So this 1987 one right here where the females production is higher. Um, <laughs> that's basically due to um, some illustrations by Phyllis Lugo in um, of the book, A Child's Story of the Book of Mormon. And then um, also the 2017 one over here is just slightly higher, and that's um, almost all due to Annie Poon's um, series of 50 prints. Um, so although overall artistic production um, began to rise dramatically here at the turn of the century, where is that? So right here turn of the century, and then production really starts to rise. But um, as you can see, um, the production of artworks by male artists appeared to have climbed earlier and more dramatically than female artists until about 2015, and then we see women starting to contribute a lot more too. So this um, 30 to 40% mark for female artists tends to hold true across different topics from the Book of Mormon. Um, except for the notable exception of images of female characters, which are more likely to be rendered by female artists. So for example, female artists created 63% of images of Soraya and 69% of images of Abish. And I'm also showing you here the two other topics with the highest percentage of um, female artists, and that's Jaredites crossing the sea and the daughters of Ishmael. And then similarly, Female artists um, seem less inclined to create images of standalone men um, and of violence. So female artists only account for 9% of images of Nephi slaying Laban, 10% of images of Nephi building his ship, 11% of images of Abinadi, 12% of Mormon, and 20% of Alma's conversion. So statistically, female artists gravitate towards topics with a strong narrative or symbolic element 
non-violent scenes and topics with strong female characters. Okay, so let me make some concluding observations. This data from the Book of Mormon art catalog unlocks many potential research topics, and the observations I've presented today are really just the tip of the iceberg. For instance, how might we account for the popularity of certain subjects? And are specific topics more popular during certain time periods? Which topics were visualized the earliest, and how did this affect subsequent artworks? What is the impact of emphasis given by church leaders? Um, and the impact of church-produced materials? In terms of timeline, how has art, production, and use changed over time? Do styles change over time? Are there differences in how male and female artists approach Book of Mormon art and why? Or how does the art from international artists compare to that done by artists in the United States? There is so much to explore, and I hope scholars will find value in the catalog as a research tool. Right now, we've um, secured permission from copyright holders to permanently host 30% uh, or about 600 images on our site. And then we've pulled another 870 images from other sites where they're already posted. And we'll continue to work to license as many of these as we can to make it a more permanent repository. But we see this as an ongoing collaborative process and one that will continue to grow over time. There's a contact form on the website where users can suggest a new artwork and even upload an image or let us know if we should add or correct information about a piece. Um, just this week, since we launched publicly on Monday, um, I've already received uh, four beautiful new artworks through that form um, that we'll add to the site. Uh, as we've been preparing to launch this week, I really wanted the site to be perfect, um, and I had to keep reminding myself that this is a work in progress. It's not finished yet, and that's just the point. Uh, we need you to help us refine it, and now that it's out in the world, um, I hope this can become a shared endeavor to maintain and expand this repository for Book of Mormon art. Um, and now, if you'll just allow me a few personal reflections as I close here. Uh, for me, really, perhaps the best part of working on this project has been the interactions with artists and scholars. I'm deeply grateful for the generous financial and institutional support of the Laura F. Willis Center for Book of Mormon Studies, part of the Neil A. Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship at BYU. My special thanks go to Spencer Fluman and Jeremy King at the Maxwell Institute. I've been lucky to have four terrific student research assistants this year uh, to help get the catalog off the ground. Um, three of them are here today. Can you guys stand? So we have Noelle Bear and, um, <laughs> and Emma Belknap and Candace Brown. Thank you guys. Let's give them a little round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. And we have one more, Elizabeth um, Finlayson, who is currently doing the London study abroad at the London Center, um, but has continued to keep sending me things even now. Um, uh, their hard work and great ideas have really helped shape the project. As an art historian, I've long wished for a centralized repository for LDS art, but the idea to build a database specific to Book of Mormon art grew out of conversations I had with um, Joseph Spencer, who's a professor of ancient scripture here, and artist Caitlin Conley in 2020, and I'm, I'm grateful to them for their thoughts. And many artists and curators um, generously gave us permission to share these images or helped with research. Um, here you can see two images by Annie Poon and Kathleen Peterson. Uh, who gave us permission to post whole collections of their Book of Mormon pieces that can't be found anywhere else online. Um, and I believe we have some artists here. I saw Rose walk in. Are there any other artists here? Yeah, okay, if you're an artist, will you stand for a second? <laughs> we can see here. There's Rose Dahl, and I'm sorry, who is that? I can't see with the light. Lacey. Lacey, oh, Lacey Gibbs. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> we, I think we've emailed, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here, and thank you for your contributions. Thanks, Rose. Um, let's see. Similarly, uh, Micah Christensen at Anthony's Fine Arts and Antiques allowed us to include 45 little-known Arnold Freeberg drawings from their collection, including this fun family portrait of Nephi's family. Um, Nephi's not in it, but you can see we have... Uh, Layman, Lemuel, Sam, Zoram. 
Ishmael, <laughs> Sariah, and, and Lehi. Um, and then Laura Howe at the Church History Museum I was an enthusiastic supporter of the project and worked with me to locate Book of Mormon images in the Church History Museum collection. My team worked to secure licensing permission from the church to include these images, and I'm pleased that in most cases, the church has allowed us to share them in the catalog. Many of these artworks have not been accessible to the public before now, or their existence even documented outside of the church's internal catalog, um, including this Navajo rug weaving of the Tree of Life by Lita Keith. Uh, so the Book of Mormon art catalog is able to provide unprecedented access to pieces that are owned by the Church History Museum. Uh, I was also happy to work with Rachel Killebrew at the Community of Christ Archives, who helped me locate and license several Book of Mormon artworks in their collection. You can see two of them here. Uh, Tiffany Wixom, who's the collections manager at the BYU Museum of Art, assisted with the Minerva Tykert Book of Mormon paintings. Emily Larson, who's associate director of the Springville Museum of Art, helped us find information on works in their collection. And many others offered assistance or gave us permission to post these images, and I am so grateful to each of them. Um, I also want to give a shout out to our web developers at Lemonade Stand. Is there someone here from Lemonade Stand? No, okay, I thought they were gonna send someone. <laughs> um, they're an Orem-based company. They worked really closely with me on the design and functionality of the site. Um, to make my ideas come to life, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the work they've done. And then personally, I've been enriched by this project, both um, aesthetically and also spiritually. While immersing myself in these thousands of images, I gained a greater appreciation for the skills of the artists and learned to look at some scenes with fresh eyes. As I've looked at each image to catalog the various figures, symbols, and scripture references, I often had my scriptures open on my desk next to me, and this process really helped me explore the scriptures in a new and fruitful way. Visual art has a powerful impact on how we think about scripture stories, doctrine, and history. And it's my hope that the Book of Mormon art catalog will be a resource for scholars, artists, and church members in their quest to study the scriptures. And I'm confident that this catalog will inspire new and varied artistic production to further illuminate the scriptures and bring viewers to Christ. So please enjoy the catalog and help us as we continue to build it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tessa, if you're back there, maybe we could turn the lights back on. And uh, I think we have time for a few questions if anyone has a question or a comment. Thank you, Tessa. Oh, Sharon, hi. of the homepage, um, just a simple search tool. And I think anything that is tagged in that entry will pop up there. So I think if you search for that there, it might bring up those ones. Yeah, good question. I didn't mean to be hitting you with another deco right out of here. <laughs> this is really exciting. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. How long did, it, did this take you, the project? Um, so I've been working on it for close to two years. Um, it's been a year that I've been working really full time on it um, with the research assistants here. Um, so. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to talk into the mic. I'm sorry because they're recording it. Sorry. <laughs> um, he was asking how how long. Thank you, Tessa. He was asking how long it took. Um, yeah, I've been working on it for about two years, and this past year, working pretty full time on it with the research assistants. And yeah, it's uh, it's been a labor of love. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a lot. Yeah. And should I repeat the first question? Okay. So the first question was, can you search by art, art artworks that are part of a series? 
Um, and I have, I do have that in the notes section, if, um, like the Kirk Richards Book of Mormon series, that's in the notes, so you should be able to, in the simple search, find it that way. Yeah. Jared, hi. hi is the uh, full control, like the subject vocabulary, available separately? Uh, just, just to see, everything, even like for stuff that doesn't have entries yet, if, for example, or... I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand. The set, like, so you said like you had like events, you had people, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like, is that full list of everything available on the website as well? Oh. So we can see where the short uh, shortfalls are for stuff that needs to be done. Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, help me out, Ari's. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I mean, I think you have to kind of get into it and look around to see. So. So like on topics, you can see that drop down menu and it'll tell you how many. So like Daughters of Ishmael, you'll see there's I think seven of that. Um, Corey Anton maybe has five or six. So you could look there and, and see which, you know, and then Nephi has 232. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the back. Have you found any similar kind of database for like New Testament or like biblical Yeah, no, I haven't. And I mean, that's something I would love to see, too, um, for this project. I wanted to start just narrowing our focus to Book of Mormon to keep it manageable and see how it goes. But I think that is a, a great next step. Yeah. Yeah, hi. It looks like the, um, the, the work has been done where you have proactively gone out and sought artwork in certain settings and specific, and you've brought it in. Do you have any intention of opening this up for people to submit mm -hmm. uh, works that are not kept in church museums and in uh, collections, but where people who have created art in other settings would be able to submit? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Yeah, we do have a submission form on our website so people can send in things like that and, and upload an image and tell us about it. Um, but we have also, you know, we've gone, we've talked with private collectors. We've emailed artists, we've looked through artist galleries, um, we, we've done a lot of digging. But yeah, I know there's more out there, and um, yeah, I'm hoping people send it in. Here, this is my sister Erin. <laughs> Yeah, well, definitely the Helaman thing surprised me. I, he's such a popular character that we talk about a lot. I was surprised there were so actual, really very few depictions of him and none of him by himself. Like we have a lot of sort of heroic Moroni or Mormon images, but we hardly see Helaman. We just see his, uh, his young men. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I guess it surprised me too that um, I guess that, that, that Nephi beat out Christ <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of frequency. <laughs> um, but, but it was close, so yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Kylie. Um, how are you, like, like in Mormon literature, it's always hard to define what is literature. How, what would your definition of what constitutes art? Can I upload my childhood to the coloring project? That is such a good question, uh, thank you. You know, for this project, we really um, have tried to just create an index of what's out there without any judgment in terms of style or approach or interpretation. Um, so there'll be some things that, that you like and some things you don't like. And there'll be some things that might be uncomfortable. You know, some of the older pieces and their depictions of figures is not how we would do it today. Um, but I think it's important that we index it and have it available and then we can talk about it and contextualize it and, um, and, and learn from it for the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, children's art, I don't know. Um, you know, at this point, I feel like I want to just try to continue gathering whatever we can. We do have some children's art that's been in um, uh, some competitions um, through the church or, Jared, does Book of Mormon Central have a children's yeah, portion we, of it? We use that. Yeah, so I think we have those in there too, um, and maybe that's maybe a filter we should add. Is sort of, you know maybe if you wanted to filter out children's art, or, or maybe you want to just see children's art. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The church decades ago came out with that Book of Mormon Stories book, mm -hmm. dozens if not hundreds of little images. Mm -hmm. Did you decide to include all of those? Oh yeah, no. I wish Liz was here because Liz was she's the one in London right now. She's my assistant in London. Um, 
because she she looked at that one um, and yeah we have a just a handful of them um, it was it was just we actually have that whole book listed as one entry um, right no, yeah no else, yeah um, but it was yeah we did not <laughs> go image by image there uh, but yeah we do have that listed there I don't know do you think that'd be helpful to <laughs> put, put them all in there. <laughs> You do? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then it's coming. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk, Jared. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, Doug. Do you see this as being a prompt by looking at the representation of what has and hasn't been already depicted, of being an opportunity then for sponsoring special exhibitions of new art and some of the things that are not represented enough? Yeah, totally. I was just having a conversation um, with someone here this morning um, about. The, the need for more things like that, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's one of the great benefits of this project is that it can show us where we need to fill in the gaps. Yeah, yeah in the back. So I know you in some ways addressed this question a little bit already, but just about um, outside of the Book of Mormon, um, from the perspective of our faith, um, there certainly are areas that aren't like the whole Bible, but are, we would recognize as restoration texts, like the Pearl of Great Price, like lengthy mm -hmm. parts of the Joseph Smith translation. Um, what, how, how difficult, both in terms of funding, in terms of time, would it be to start adding, you know, something that would be like, okay, and, you know, things that are unique to the theology of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that'd be so useful too. Um, yeah, and again, just starting on this project, we were trying to limit our scope, and it still was a huge project, and you know, we still have a, a ways to go, hopefully. There's still more out there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it'd be great to, to start expanding it. Hopefully this is just the beginning of these kinds of projects. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, so thank you so much for this presentation, and thank you so much for the evidence, I mean, tons of work with you and the rest of your team. My question is kind of just wanting to like project for me into the future the, the, what the apparatus is to keep this going. So, mm -hmm. I mean, do you continue to maintain a team of research assistants for, to field all of the submissions? Will you please continue as director? I mean, this is so much work. Will that continue in the future? And what does that look like for you guys? Yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, yeah, again, I'm so grateful to the Maxwell Institute for providing the funding to get this thing off the ground and um, uh, to let me have some research assistance. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to say they've just uh, approved a 2023 budget for us to continue this next year. Um, so, um, you know, we'll probably just take it a step at a time, but at least, yeah, we'll continue. And uh, uh, so I, I just, I actually own this, like I, I own the site, um, but the Maxwell Institute gave me a grant to build it. So I will continue it, it and how that looks in the future. We'll just see what the best use of it is and where it helps people the most. Um, but, you know, I'm just so thrilled um, that Maxwell Institute was excited to, to help uh, launch this project and grateful for all their support. Well, us too. It's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Well, Kim, why don't I turn it back over to you to, to wrap up? I mean, there's nothing else to say other than join in thanking Jennifer and then come out and join us in the reception. <laughs>